Thank you. I guess what kind of plays in a little bit is about a balanced budget. I would like you to give two specific steps that you would take to shrink the federal deficit. Because I think everybody agrees it's not that we're taxed too little, because we're taxed plenty. It's that we spend way too much. So it's time to take the axe to something and get rid of the things that get us. Like you and I have to live our house. We got to have our government live and uh, run their house. So the question is again for you, John: two steps that you take to shrink the federal deficit. Uh, I, first of all, I would fire Obama. <laughs> Why do we have to wait two and a half more years to get rid of him? That's a problem. Um, yeah, shrink the uh, question is to shrink the budget, obviously. I think in a gradual way, uh, we, I don't think a shock factor would work with the uh, federal budget. If it's right now, if it's huge, you've got this big federal budget, I think we have, I think realistically, we could bring it down with uh, a new Congress, bring it down first year 10%. And also, at the same time, while we do that, let's cut congressional pay 10%. But anyway, if we do that, it took gradually 10%, maybe the following year, maybe we can get it down another 10%, get, get it down to where we are in an austerity program, and we're not wasting the people's money. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. I believe in some pretty common sense budget reforms that I think would really help us move toward a balanced budget. The first thing I would do is pass a balanced budget law that's effective immediately. Uh, then I'd pass a balanced budget amendment, but the balanced budget law would be in effect until three quarters of the states ratified the balanced budget amendment. Then I would pass a line item veto to support that. I would pass zero based budget where you start with zero and instead of starting with growth, which is what the federal government does now. And I would pass performance based budgeting so that we can actually look at the money we're spending and see if we're getting the results we're supposed to be getting. And the last thing I do is pass a two-year budget cycle. Congress passes their budgets every year, and they don't have time to go through the details to make sure that they're actually checking on the things they're supposed to be checking on to see if spending uh, happens. Last year, Congress only made through two of their budget bills before um, they had to actually pass a new resolution on spending by uh, October 1st of this year. So uh, I think those, what is that, six things would really move us toward a balanced budget. It would require a balanced budget. It would give the tools through a line item veto, through zero-based budgeting, performance budgeting, but they would give us time by moving from a one-year budget cycle to a two-year budget cycle to actually complete the tasks in front of us to make the tough decisions. Because when you just do a continuing resolution, you keep the spending levels the same, you haven't made any of the tough decisions. So I think those six things would really help us move toward a balanced budget. David? Well, definitely the one thing I would not support is continually increasing the debt ceiling. It was just increased by $1.9 trillion. We are looking at a possible $14 trillion of debt. Uh, I agree. I think that the next move is to come up with a balanced budget amendment to the Constitution. I think the, just like here in the state of Ohio, we're required to have a uh, balanced budget. The federal government should too, because the money that they're taking is from you, because you went run your house the way the government runs their themselves. Thank you. Incidentally, you're doing a great job of keeping in line with the time. Thank you very much. Um, as everyone knows, uh, and I believe, I believe that, that it's, this is so, so far, I don't think Mary Jo Kilroy has a candidate in the primary. Is that correct? Am I, am I, is that right? Okay. She's unopposed in the primary. She does not have the benefit then of, of uh, a little trial by fire like you gentlemen are in the competition aspect. So, But what I'd like to know, and I think that our audience would like to know is, what do you plan to do to beat her in the general election? And can you elaborate on how your campaign war chest is doing 
and all the tools that you will be needed to wage a very a successful campaign uh, in the November the fall election. And I believe, um, oh, I think it's John's turn. I think. Yeah, John, we'll start off and move down to you next on the next question, Steve. So, again, the question, John, is what, 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 how are you doing in your strategy and your plans to uh, wage the contest this fall against Mary Jo Kilroy, who will be your opponent if you uh, win the primary? Well, I'm focused on Mr. Stiles right now. Uh, I, I go nowhere uh, after May the 4th if I'm not nominated. Uh, yeah, I really don't get that much thought about Mrs. Kilroy. That uh, now she's a, she's a socialist progressive. We can pound on her uh, her record. She's voted 100 percent with the uh, Pelosi, Reid, Obama agenda. Uh, she's not going the road, folks. She's no matter. She's a rubber stamp for that crowd. And well, I said it earlier. Mary Jo has got to go. Um, the strategy to defeat her, uh, she's a, uh, a pro-choice Democrat. I'm a pro-life conservative Republican. I would hammer her on that issue, and I would address that issue. Uh, it's, an, it's the most important issue that we have, I think, in our country right now. Um, it's a terrible tragedy that the uh, that uh, Roe v. Wade was uh, voted by the uh, Supreme Court justices in 73 that they uh, decided that, 72 vote. I think that was one of the worst decisions ever made in our country. And we think <laughs> our nation has been living with that burden ever since. It's a heavy burden and Abortion must come to a stop. Um, let me give you one more thing. This is Kilroy. Thank you, Steve. Senator Cyrus. Thank you. Uh, I. Uh, you have a battle-tested uh, candidate in this race, and uh, my focus throughout this race is going to be to uh, meet, beat Mary Jo Kilroy. And uh, I will make sure that happens, whether John wins the primary or whether I win the primary. Uh, my focus this year is, is making sure Mary Jo Kilroy um, is not in Congress. campaign has raised a little over $600,000 at the end of December and had $515,000 on hand as a war chest and we've been raising money ever since then. We'll report again at the end of, uh, um, the end of this quarter in March. And, uh, but we, I raised last time $2.3 million uh, and I expect to be able to raise somewhere between two and two and a half million dollars in this campaign. We have about 3,000 volunteers signed up ready to hit the ground and make sure we knock on doors. We knocked on 108,000 doors last time. We'll do more this time. Um, and uh, Mary Jo Kilroy has a record. She has a record on cap and trade that would kill 100,000 Ohio jobs. She has a record on trying to take over our health care. She has a record on the stimulus and bailouts and bonuses and trying to just take over private businesses like General Motors. So, you know, there's a lot of issues and I'll have the money and the resources and the manpower to get that message out to beat Mary Jo Kilroy, and like John said, Mary Jo must go. Thank you. David, you're, 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 you're up. The thing that I would do is, and what I am doing, is offering you a constitutional conservative who's running, a pro-life, pro-Tenth Amendment, willing to step up, repeal the 16th and 17th Amendments of the Constitution. And I'm, and I'm pledging to the people that I'm going to follow Article 1, Section 8 at every turn. 